All right, this is our beautiful EMA board. This is where we'll be conducting our session today. For those of you who are joining a VMUG for the first time, uh, I'm gonna give you a little backstory of, uh, of what VMUGs are all about. It's basically a series of events that we run on a monthly basis. Uh, we are representing the EMA, the European, uh, uh, Middle East and African area. And we're gonna be uh, highlighting uh, Miro power users every single month. We're at the ninth edition. We're gonna have a celebratory 10th edition next month. So keep an eye out for that. Um, all in all, what we want to do is to bring, bring people that have, are using Miro for various types of activities, people that work in the field of design, product management, startups, innovation, you, call, you, you name it. As long as they have something to share about anything from workshops to remote collaboration to best practices, frameworks, processes, everything that they do, uh, we are here to showcase them. And uh, yeah, let's, let's get started. So um, being, uh, being the host and the speakers for this edition is, uh, is a very... Uh, interesting position for us to be in. So uh, a quick intro about ourselves. My name is Raz. Uh, I'm a product designer by trade and I've been doing this for the last seven years, mostly working on a consulting basis with various companies uh, from literally all over the world. My name is Anna. I'm a product strategist. My background is in product management and I've been working with B2B, B2C companies, helping them from the first moment get go to launch a product and also working with companies that already are uh, having mature products. So I've been working with a lot of various set of uh, companies and yeah, I'm super excited to share today with you some of the learnings that we have around the North Star metric framework because it turned out to be super useful for us <laughs> in yeah. our day-to-day -day work. You see, you see all of these things online, like processes and frameworks and, and things companies and people put out and you just think, oh, yet another process, another framework. How is this different than everything else that exists out there? But we really hope uh, you're gonna, gonna get this same excitement that we have the moment we discovered the North Star metric and we applied it with a lot of, a lot of great companies that we managed to, to work with and that you're gonna see the benefits and hopefully after this, uh, gonna attempt to implement something like that yourselves. Now, a quick intro about not just ourselves, but what we do. Uh, we are the co-founders of Just Mad. Uh, it's a product design and innovation consultancy. We're uh, fully distributed. We're currently based in Romania. That's uh, where the current times have, have uh, got us locked in. But we basically work for companies from all over the world. You can see a few of our, our clients here in the bubble. They're all amazing people here. I already saw some people from those companies that we used to work with, and we, we salute you. And uh, if you want to connect with us, we're on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to read more about what we do, we'd be happy to connect. And uh, yeah, let's, oh, let's get I started. I will hand over the digital microphone over to Anna, and she will walk <laughs> you through our main presentation on the, topic, on the topic of the North Star metric. Really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so hello again, everyone. Anna here, uh, the better half of Just Mad. <laughs> So uh, just a quick agenda on what we're going to cover today in this session. Obviously, we want to understand a bit the challenges that product teams are facing. Uh, maybe you want to yeah, zoom in. Gonna, because... I'm going to zoom in and just want to lock yeah, them. Yeah, lock them. Cool. So obviously, we want to cover a bit the challenges that product teams go through and then explain a bit the North Star metric framework and what it is all about. Then we're going to show you how it helped teams to get aligned and get focused. And then at the end, we're going to show you our North Star metric workshop, uh, sorry, temp, um, Euro workshop template. And then obviously at the end, we're going to have a Q&A session and answer all of your questions. So as Raz mentioned uh, in the beginning, we worked with a dozen of great companies and product teams every single year. And one thing they all have in common is that they're building all amazing products, but they also share some uh, common challenges. So yeah, the struggle is real. And very often we hear things like, I can connect our day-to-day -day work with overall business impact. Or we hear we already use OKRs, but somehow we still end up working in silos or we hear our team success is measured in the number of features that we release. So more focused on the output rather than the outcome. So we also hear that we have slow feedback loops and we do a lot of guesswork. And lastly, probably the most common is that for most teams, growth means acquisition. And obviously this means that most people focus uh, their attention on uh, acquisition activities. Well, 15 years ago, that might have got it because companies had a very low entry barrier. But now, today, we live in an incredibly competitive and crowded uh, landscape where there's an app for everything, there's a product for everything, and everyone is fighting against the same audience's attention. So probably now, more than ever, 
focusing on customer value and UX is critical for survival. Exactly. It's no longer um, uh, something that gives you an advantage over someone. Mm -hmm. Like the, the baseline of what good UX and, and great customer value is has increased and the levels of that have gone up and people are more sophisticated in terms of what they want to achieve when they hire a product to get a job done. Now, before going further, uh, I would like to take the group polls and see how you feel about these three statements. So what I would like you to do is, if you're following me, uh, is to place your cursor next to the emoji that represents your status for each statement. So yep. the first one is my team and I are perfectly aligned uh, on what our product strategy is. Yeah, so we, I would like to see how many people feel yeah. this is true for yeah. them. I'm just going to bring everyone to me so everyone knows what we're talking about. So just hover your mouse in the appropriate area. Okay, so we have get a pulse. three lucky <laughs> people that actually... Right. There's still some people yeah. out there. Folks, uh, those of you who are in Miro, uh, we kindly ask you to go to the board now and, and just vote by overlaying your, your cursor on top of the, the right section, depending on how you feel when we ask you when we tell you that my team and I are perfectly aligned on what our product strategy is, is that true? Is that false for you or is it somewhere in the middle? All right. So it seems we're somewhere in the middle. There's, there's a few people here who, who know their, their stuff and apparently are going, doing everything almost perfectly. We need to know who you are and learn more. Yeah, on exactly. How to do that. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. We're going to do the same thing now, but with a different statement. So I can easily connect the work that I'm doing to the business impact. Just brought everyone to me. Okay. Let's see where you are. Okay. All right. One more. And the last one, we have a very efficient way of prioritizing product initiatives. Let's see where you stand. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. This how is, the tables this have This is actually turned. very interesting to see how everyone feels. Interesting to take the polls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, okay. Going back to our slides, there's one main takeaway that I would like to leave you with. And this is that now more than ever, it is crucial to orchestrate your product team's efforts for maximum customer value and obviously revenue growth. <laughs> if it wasn't obvious. Yes. Uh, but as I mentioned before, there's so many initiatives and ideas that you can work on. It's really easy to fall out of focus. And at this point, I assume everyone can agree that a business purpose is to make money. So revenue is crucial for survival. And I'm pretty sure that everyone in the company is trying to influence, the, influence that. But very often, we find ourselves in the position of working on initiatives that are not clearly connected with the overall strategy, or it's hard, hard to find common ground with other people in our company. And since we've mentioned money or revenue to be more specific, there's one important aspect uh, to understand here. And this is the difference between leading and lagging indicators. So a lot of companies, companies used to focus on monthly recurring revenue, MRR, and their leading indicator of success uh, is money, obviously, but there are a couple of problems with that. Revenue can hide what is going on under the hood with product usage and probably can actually hide you from signals about your product's health and uh, over the longer run, obviously. And if you're looking to improve retention, but you're only tracking uh, revenue, the game is over before you've even had a chance to play. So revenue is the output of engaged users. The usage is the input. So therefore revenue is not a good indicator of future success. So when it comes to bringing everyone together as uh, on a common ground, my, one of my favorite books is actually Sapiens. So there is no better way than using a story. So humans transact using stories. But usually what happens in a complex ecosystem, everyone in the team has their own story. So then the question is, what is the cohesive story of everything? How do all of our stories relate? How do we combine our work to kind of find meaning to be part of that story? And because you have a cohesive story, people are able to make decisions a lot more quickly and a lot more clear as they work together. So part of our job to help these companies is to figure out how to find their cohesive story. And as you've guessed that from the title, the North Star metric allowed us to just do that. So right now we're gonna introduce the North Star metric, your product team's unified story, <laughs> if you may. So just one quick uh, definition. Here we have Sean Ellis. Uh, he coined the 
after North Star metric, I think somewhere early 2010. So looking at the definition, the North Star framework is a model for managing products by identifying a single crucial metric, the North Star metric, that according to Shanalis, best captures the core value that your product delivers to customers. We've added uh, a link right here where mm -hmm. you can uh, go ahead and read more on the Growth Hackers blog about the North Star metric if, if you're interested in some more uh, deep insight on, on the method. Yes, so remember how we said that revenue is a lagging indicator, the North Star metric is actually a leaning indicator of success. So obviously, uh, we mentioned the fact that teams usually struggle to find a common ground on achieving revenue for the company. But now with the North Star metric, think about it like, like a framework that allows you to bridge business outcomes with customer value in a way that every person, every team, or even every department work in synergy and their efforts, actions, or goals are all heading towards the same common direction. So we have everyone pointing in the same direction. It's like finding, a, it's like, like running multiple threads through a single bead, right? Like instead of everyone kind of uh, loosely understanding uh, what it is they need to do and having a hard time prioritizing all of their, their initiatives, yeah. the North Star metric gives you kind of this focal point where everyone can confidently point towards. And that ultimately turns into um, an indicator like revenue. Now, before going further with the framework, I would like to cover a bit what the North Star metric framework isn't. It isn't your roadmap. It isn't your software development process. It isn't a prioritization framework, although it gives you a very solid foundation. And again, this is not a goal setting framework like OKRs, you can actually combine them, but the North Star metric framework will give you the foundation to set better goals. And we're gonna show you some examples on how to do that. So now that we've looked at the definition, let's take a look at the elements of a North Star metric. Obviously the first important element is that your North Star should be aligned with your product vision. And the next one, it should measure the moment that a customer finds value from your product. So measuring customer value is crucial. And the last one and third, and obviously very important, it has to be a leading indicator of revenue. Obviously your company will care a lot about that. So I'm gonna use Spotify to best illustrate this example. Uh, so in case of Spotify, um, you were wondering, so we, we could wonder how does the vision translate into North Star? The first question that we have to ask ourselves is what is the measurable world that we want to create? So in this example would we'll be uh, giving people access to all the music they want all the time in a completely legal and accessible way. From the vision, you can actually extract the customer value. So moving further, further we can actually see how the revenue will translate into the North Star metric. And you can see their model is very simple. They have premium subscribers, but they also have free, um, Three users that are ad supported users, aka the free ones, and 90% of them are premium, 10% are um, free users. And you can see <laughs> from the graph that they, the people that are actually premium subscribers, they listen 75 hours per month, and the free ones, they listen to 25 hours. So obviously, the focus will be on the premium subscriber. And now let's take a look at on how a North Star metric would look like. Obviously, this is a hypothetical example. So one North Star metric for Spotify could be time spent by subscribers listening to music because it measures customer value, it is aligned with the product vision, and it is, it is a leading indicator of revenue since we're talking about subscribers and not free users. Okay, now another concept that might help you define your North Star um, is which engagement game you're playing. So typically company companies play to win attention transaction or productivity. So let's talk about the first one, the attention game. Products play, playing these games are trying to maximize the amount of time users spend in product. Uh, industries that typically play this game today are media, gaming, or company displaying advertisements to you, usually social media. The second one, the transaction game, and here we have products uh, that help customers make purchase decisions with confidence. Companies uh, you will often find playing these games are e-commerce platforms, obviously. And the last one, the productivity game, actually Miro is one example of this game. Products that are playing this game create an easy and reliable way to, comp uh, to complete an existing task or, or help you with the, some kind of a workflow. Uh, and obviously this game is predominant in business to business software. So B2B or SaaS as a service. 
So now that we covered the customer value exchange for your games, let's look at some hypothetical North Stars for each company, for each type of product that plays the attention transaction and productivity game. Obviously, some hypothetical North Stars for companies such as Facebook or Netflix could be total time spent engagement, uh, engaging with content or a number of users spending more than five minutes per day, probably with the feed or number of subscribers streaming more than 60 hours per month. And then on the transaction front, we have total number of purchases completed or average number of purchases per prime subscriber. And the last one on the productivity front, we have average number of records created per account or number of engaged cloud subscribers. Okay, and before moving forward with the presentation, we would like to take again the polls and see what game are you playing? Same thing as before, just hover your, your cursor on top of the, the area that you believe fits your, your company profile and the type of exchange that you're looking to get with your users. Okay, so we have a couple of people working the attention game, a couple on the transaction front, mm -hmm. and the last one, I think the most of us are working the productivity <laughs> spectrum. Okay. Yeah, here's the uh, board to the mirror link for those of you who arrived a little bit later. Here it is. Okay, perfect. I have a lot of productivity going on here. Perfect. So now that we've defined uh, the North Star metric and we've learned how to actually uh, create one, obviously you're probably asking yourselves, okay, um, my product is quite complex and there are multiple dimensions of a business that will determine if the, if the product is suc successful or not. Uh, and each dimension should have their own key metrics. And this is correct. And at a minimum, there are three key buckets for every product to focus on. And this is the breadth of retention, the depth of engagement, how often, and obviously monetization, how many people actually uh, move from one bucket to another. So one good question is, how does the North Star metric account for other dimensions? And what we're going to do, we're going to do is to look at the constellation of metrics. <laughs> Now, before jumping into the product formula and show exactly how that works, uh, I would like to cover a bit uh, the difference between output metrics and input metrics. So output, usually it, it is a result. And input, it's something actionable that you can work on. And your action will determine your result, obviously. I'm going to use a very simple <laughs> um, example here to illustrate this. So if you want to become fit, that's the result. You're not going to become fit overnight. You will have to have proper nutrition. You have to exercise regularly. You need to sleep, or to sleep and get some proper rest. And all these actions will actually lead you to becoming a fitter person. So this is the result. And this is what we have to keep in mind because the North Star metric is, in, is an output that has to be influenced by other key um, metrics. So we have here a product formula. This is very easy to uh, display. If you break down a North Star metric, you have actually four actionable input metrics on four dimensions. So if you think about the North Star as a function, it can be the function of breadth, depth, frequency, and efficiency. So how many active or returning users are taking this action? What's their depth of engagement? How often does each user engage? And how fast do they succeed? They, your North Star metric doesn't have to have all of them, but it should have at least two of them. And we're gonna show you a couple of examples now. So going back to our Spotify example, the North Star metric for Spotify is time spent by subscribers listening to music. And on the breadth um, dimension we have here listeners and some key inputs would be number of tri trial users and obviously premium subscribers. And on the depth front, we have content engagement, how often they engage with the, with the content. And here we have a number of sessions, uh, hours per session, sorry. And then lastly, on frequency, we have uh, listening frequency and number of sessions per week. Let's look at another example. This is uh, from Instacart. So one hypothetical North Star metric would be total monthly items received. And on the dimension front, we have breadth, number of users placing orders each month, on depth, number of items within order, frequency, number of orders completed, and efficiency, percentage of items delivered within time. Because if I'm not receiving my order when I need it, then for me as a customer, it's not something successful. So how do we translate this in the roadmap? How do we translate these input metrics in a roadmap? It's very simple. We have new signups. We, we can express um, sub trials, trial conversions. On the dev side, we have recommendations, shopping lists, discount coupons, and so on. You can see that you can come up with a lot of initiatives that would target those input metrics. 
And another question that we often get is how do you actually optimize your North Star metric three to your customer journey, right? We have, yes, we have the four depth, the four dimensions of the North Star metric, but how do we account for the customer journey? Obviously we want, usually a uh, new customer hears or finds us and then they become a new uh, customer, then they transform into current or power users. Some of them become dormant and then we try to resurrect them and becoming again current or even power users. So there are some thresholds that these users have to go through. And obviously you will have teams assigned for each threshold to help you with. So for example, if you have users that are not signed up, you want to convert them into signing up. This is the acquisition team. Then we have customers that have signed up, but you want to, you want to activate them. So we have, we have here the activation team and so on and so forth. We have core free and monetized. We have in this example, we have four specific teams that, that will work on the product. Now the question is, how do you align cross-functionality within the North Star metric? Obviously, um, here I have an example of a squad, but you can call them whatever. I've heard the term squad, pod, team, you name it. Pack, pack all kinds of yeah, yeah all, all, all kinds of names. So just to give you an example, if you're working with the North Star metric framework, you're probably questioning, okay, so what is my impact on the North Star as a squad. So how, for example, how many activations did we increase and what was my role in that? Obviously we have different roles and different responsibilities, but with the North Star metric, we can actually pinpoint exactly where that value happens and where we have the biggest input. And just to better illustrate this whole idea, I'm going to have here a bigger example. <laughs> Don't get scared folks. This is, this is what the, the actual framework looks like. So let's. So if you look, we, if you look at an example, oh, oh, we have the icon floating. Oh. The grocery. Whoops. Yeah. No problem. Da, da, da. Sorry. There we go. So imagine that we have here a delivery app. So obviously the business outcome that we want to achieve is the flat rate fee for each purchase. A uh, hypothetical North Star metric would be monthly active users placing two plus orders per month. The squad goals would be new user, new user onboarded, the new user activated, habit formation, this is the depth dimension, and frequent, uh, habit temperature, which is the frequency. Some leading indicators would be number of new users who place their first order, number of users who place multiple orders in month one, in the first month, uh, percentage of monthly active users who place multiple orders in uh, the second month, and obviously when it comes to frequency, number of orders per user. Here we have displayed the user life cycle. And then obviously the oil boils down to potential product initiatives and to the actual work that the team has to do. So for example, for the leading indicator, the, for the first one, for the first squad, we have maybe A-B tests for onboarding, for the onboarding flow. Then we have promotions or discounts for the, sorry, that was the first order, not first. <laughs> or we can experiment sure. with, yeah. We can experiment with push or email campaigns during the first week or the first month to see how people engage. And as we go along, we can actually find more and more initiatives and every single pod or team can work super tangible on the input metrics that they have defined. Okay. Perfect. Mm. And with that, we conclude the, the core of our presentation. And based on everything that, that we've discussed here, what we've done is we've uh, tested out the framework with multiple of our clients and doing this remotely in this uh, format, we actually translated everything into a tangible workshop that everyone can use. And we've built the Miro template that uh, we're giving away for free in Miroverse for everyone interested in doing that. So just for a split second, I'm going to stop screen sharing to say hi. Hello, everyone. See that we're still here. Just going to open up the the, board? the Miro board with our template. And just as a teaser, the Miro yeah. board will be live starting September 1st on Miroverse. There's a link in the board. I'm going to share that with you. And whoever wants to use it to bring it inside your company, try it out. We have this template ready for you with explanations. We're going to walk you through that in just a second and see exactly how, how it's built and how everything we looked at connects to, to this. All right, let's see if, um, just in case, Everyone has any, any challenges, any problems or anything to add at this point? Let me know in the chat because if not, we're going to, we're going to hop into the board. All right, let's go share screen. Okay, so one thing that we really want to mention is huge yes. thanks to Amplitude. Because yes. Because we inspired ourselves. The whole work that we did here is inspired from their content. Yeah. So, so definitely, definitely check them out. They have this thing called the North Star playbook. 
uh, we highly encourage you to check it out. It's in the board and click on it and, and go ahead and, and read more about this. Uh, basically what we've done is we've uh, combined our passion and from, from seeing the value of the North Star metric uh, framework and applying it to so many, so many companies and seeing so many great results, just systemized it in a way that literally anyone can take it and use it in a remote environment given the, the times we're living. So uh, let me give you a quick overview. This is quite large. I'm just going to zoom out. You can see the, the, the how, how large this template is, but don't get frightened because we've added these, uh, the owl is our, our, our spirit animal That's and cool. we've, we've added uh, these owls to help you out. So they're basically directions that for you as someone who might facilitate a workshop like this, um, just helps you prepare. So you might look in and say, hey, add your client or project logo and then delete me after you're done. So the way it would go, you would just come in, add the logo, change the name, add the date, the team members, and then boom, you delete Mr. Mr. Owl and that's it. So this is the way the, the template will come out of the box. So feel free to, to remove these once you're done. Uh, all in all, we have a very simple intro where we explain the rules, the duration. This is a three hour workshop. Uh, we've, we've tested it over and over again and, and the three hour mark seems to be the sweet spot. Uh, yeah. Kind of intro everything that's going on in here. The exact same uh, type of Miro intro that you folks had at the beginning of this VMUG about undoing, zooming and using the basic tools of Miro. We've created this very simple exercise. We're aware that not every single person on this planet has tried an infinite canvas tool. So just to be sure we've added this micro training, it takes like three minutes. Everything is, is timed. As you notice, every little quadrant has, uh, has a timing on it. So you know exactly as a facilitator how long you're gonna need to do this. Um, we introduced the North Star metric framework here because obviously you've seen there's quite a lot going on. Uh, you have to do some explanation to get people to click and understand exactly uh, what's going on and what the North Star metric is and why it matters. But, the exact, yeah. yeah. But feel free to adjust the section. So if you feel exactly. that the team is prepared and they understand, you can remove. If you feel that they need more preparation, you can actually start a bit upfront and actually yeah. have a present, uh, like a um, separate presentation only on explaining the framework. Exactly. Uh, depending on, on your level of knowledge and, and what your team knows about the framework, feel free to adjust it. As Anna mentioned, the template is yours after we, we publish it. So all in all, I'm going to go through this. It's exactly the same fitness example that we talked about. The same things you saw in the presentation are also here. Um, what we also added, the same way we asked you to hover your mouse over a few items in here, we created these sliders where you could take the pulse of your team and like, actually understand what a product strategy and people just drag these things and you kind of create these heat areas. If it gets darker, uh, you notice that that's where the focal area is. So we kind of run this, this 10 minute exercise to get people on the same page and for us as facilitators to, to make sure everyone is on the same, on the same uh, level when it comes to what our product strategy is, how we influence business impact and if uh, we're perfectly aligned on what we need to do. There is some pre-work that needs to be done before this workshop. We, in the description of the template, you're gonna see there's a clear kind of step-by-step -step one, two, three recipe on how to do this. As preparation for a workshop like this, you would need to get a, get a few things ready. An experience map, or uh, as some might call it, a user journey map. Uh, we call it the experience map because we feel it encompasses a little bit more, not, not just the user journey, but also the business's side. So we call this an experience map. It's uh, fairly straightforward. You define all of your actors involved in the interaction with your product or service. You define the stages, whether that's discovery, acquisition, activation, engagement, retention, whatever uh, stages you find uh, suiting here. You have your map and this is all done before the workshop, just, just for clarity purposes. Um, you define, if you use OKRs, you can add them here. Your, your latest version of the OKRs, you can add them here for clarity. Your high level roadmap, if something like that exists and an insight about your audience, because at times you might be running this workshop with uh, people working different business units and some other folks might be focusing on an audience, some others on another audience. So just for clarity, to make sure what you're talking about here, this is some pre-work that you need to do. So probably uh, just a bit of an explanation here with the audience. So for example, if you're working on a huge ecosystem like LinkedIn, mm -hmm. where they have multiple products, you, you would want to set a North Star metric per product or per business unit or per division. We're going to get into that a bit later, but you don't want to set a North Star metric on the whole ecosystem level. Yeah, because, because it's, it's really not, uh, doesn't really give you the answers that you yeah. want. So try to go as grandly as you can at a product level. 
All right, now, now let's get into the actual workshop, the actual activities that um, the team will be going through. So as you see here, we have uh, the same structure for every exercise, tell you exactly what you need to do, the directions that the team needs to take. We won't go into every single one of them because it's gonna take an hour just this, but just as a general rule, you have all the explanations here. So you as a facilitator have everything at hand. And uh, this might seem familiar. We just looked at this, how we defined that the North Star metric is aligned with product vision, measures customer value, and is a leading indicator of revenue. Uh, we uh, basically created a few small exercises in this workshop where people can get to define those things the same way we saw in the Spotify example. So for example, here, if you were to do this with a company, um, we would say, okay, let's review our product vision statement. And then together with the team, we'll try to, try to uh, come up and define what the uh, product's vision is. And obviously it's going to take a little bit of conversation to do that. And after that, we'll extract some key learnings that uh, we ask people reading the, the product vision statement. What do you learn out of that? What can we, what does this learning say that is difficult or foundational? What can we learn about the product's value from this learning? Yeah, when we started to design this workshop, we initially started with this exercise and we were a bit skeptical if it has any value at all. Yeah. But after running a couple of workshops, we realized that there are so many teams that, you know, they don't have full alignment and yeah. so many team members are, are, don't have the same understanding on what the vision is of the product. Exactly. So, Everyone knows what they do, you yeah. know, what our software does, but they don't really... Uh, have a super clear understanding of the vision and how that translates to value to customers and users. So this, this part, um, it, it's really crucial and it's a supporting exercise for what has to come afterwards. Next up, we have the core value statement exercise. As I said, it connects a lot with what we've done in the previous exercise and also goes in depth on the three uh, types of games, the value exchange examples that we showed you right, about the attention game, transaction, and productivity. Because every product in relation to its customers, there's a certain exchange of something. So for example, uh, Facebook gives you a platform for entertainment and self-expression and information. Uh, and in exchange, uh, you pay with ad engagement and time spent on, um, on, on, uh, on the feed and uh, interacting with different elements and features of the software. Then in terms of like transactions, uh, let's say uh, it gives you status, give you fulfillment, you want to buy something from Amazon and exchange, you obviously give them a purchase and for utility efficiency or, or master like the productivity game, you might pay with a subscription, right? Like the same way you would for a tool like Miro. So all of these things uh, come into play in order to define our core value statement and all the previous exercise and everything we've done before is um, the, its all purpose is to align everyone on what the core value statement is because that will connect with the North Star metric. Now, just going through really quickly uh, to the other parts of the, the workshop, another exercise is defining the critical event. This is the one single event in your product. Uh, some people um, relate this to the aha moment, the moment where the maximum amount of value is delivered to the customer. And that critical event is really, really important. You really have to identify it. Is that one sole uh, action that you want your customers to take every single, every time, single time they are using your product? Exactly. So for Google, it's a search for Amazon, it's a purchase for Spotify, it's listening content and obviously having a booking complete or accepted for Airbnb. Have a short break. Then we look at our monet the monetiz monetization and revenue model. This should be pretty straightforward. You shouldn't, it would be pretty dangerous if you didn't know as a, as a high growth company, how you're making money. So this should be pretty straightforward. It's a very simple exercise. And moving on to the candidate North star. This is where all the three uh, things that we talked about before, the fact that North Star is aligned with product vision, measures customer value, and is a leading indicator of revenue. All of these three things will uh, come together in order for the team to define a candidate North Star. And in order to make that in a qualitative way, we actually added a checklist. And you should always check your hypothetical hypothetical North Star. The, the reason why it's hypothetical is because uh, you have to test it. Just like anything, you need to validate whether you are right or you're, you're just taking wild guesses. As any framework, the North Star metric framework is not perfect or flawless. There's no such thing. So uh, that's why we start with the hypothetical North Star and then we adjust along the way. And the same way you've seen before, these are the examples that you've seen before regarding the product formula. What your team will do now, if you remember the grocery store app, we had, the, we had the, those input metrics that feed into the North Star and eventually lead to uh, the long-term business uh, outcome, which in most cases it relates to revenue. We created this exercise where the team will brainstorm different kinds of inputs 
on the four dimensions, whether it's breadth, depth, frequency, and efficiency. Don't worry, you have instructions at the top of this uh, framework, which will help you out in uh, guiding your team uh, through going through these exercises. So every, everything is pretty structured and, and thought through. And after you, you're done with that, you're gonna map out um, your input metrics and everything you've defined before and start thinking about what initiatives you can drive in order to impact the, in, those input metrics. So everything is like a cascade that flows. But if you remember the graphic we showed before, um, having that, that North Star metric, the monthly groceries delivered on time and going backwards and defining the input metrics and then connecting that with real work will allow you to so much better prioritize and make the, like better product decisions in, in a very, very quick amount of time. Okay, so after we are done with the North Star Metric work Framework Workshop, obviously we want to present a high level view of what happens after we finish the workshop and how we actually put the North Star Metric in, into action. So obviously we have, uh, we call them, we, we start to look at bets um, and we have four level levels of bets. Level zero, level one, level two, and level three. And obviously the level zero is the North Star metric. Uh, this is the first bet that you're making against the business impact that you're gonna create. Then we have the input metrics. Uh, these are set and should be reviewed a one or th uh, three quarters. These are the input assumptions that you know, will feed into the North Star metric. And then afterwards we have the level two bets, which are the opportunities. And these are more or less the same one as OKRs. They can basically inform your O's from the KRs your objectives and every single team should review this one, three months. And of course, at the um, week to week level, and we have here interventions, this is the actual work that will have to happen against the, uh, the level two bets that you have uh, decided as a team. And how as, this looks like? Yeah, this is, this, yeah. this is how it looks like in practice because you take these opportunities and, and you, you bring just map them, them. You map them here on, and you prioritize them. You rank them uh, based on whatever framework you want. You can use ICE to, to rank them and which seem to be the most promising. And then you just split them up among your teams or squads or whatever type of team formats you have. And then you have uh, your, you can imagine even your Kanban board where you uh, say, okay, we're going to try this. We're trying this and we're reviewing this. And these orange stickies right here are the, upper, the interventions that we talked about that you will look through and try to optimize and improve on every one to three weeks. And as much as, as this seems a little intimidating, there's all these tables and this arrows and all of these, th these things, once you get down into it and you're, you're on the ground actually thinking about what our star metric is, work your way backwards, define all those input metrics, and you manage to communicate that at a company level, it just gives you so much structure to product decision making that it, it's just going to leave you in, in awe. And even for us, seeing uh, the reaction of the people we managed to implement this with is, is just purely it's super valuable. It's, it's it really, really, hap really happy to see what the reactions were and what the outcomes were uh, once teams managed to implement something like this. So this was the template. Uh, as, uh, as we said, it's going to be available September 1st on the Miroverse. We'll actually add a link in the board for the Miroverse because I just noticed we forgot, but we'll add a link in there and the board will be visible yeah. to you for uh, one week. After that, it will become view only. So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna end the screen share right here. We have some questions in. Uh... Okay, it looks fantastic. Okay. Okay, uh, we have a question. We have questions coming in, folks. Uh, that was That was it for the actual presentation. We're now gonna go back and try to see if you have any questions. We have three questions in here. We're going to take them one by one. And in the meantime, I, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to review everything in the chat. So whatever. What if you're playing a different, in a different game. Mm, just an example. What, uh, that, yeah. what that could be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feel free to meet yourselves. The person <laughs> yeah. who wrote like, what if we're playing a different game? It'd be important to understand exactly what you're talking about because it can be literally anything or, or probably we can find a way to better understand if it fits in the three games we presented. Feel free to meet yourselves if you However, want. However, so these games that we presented are here to help you and inform you, but not necessarily to dictate exactly what the North Star metric is. Precisely. There's support and they, they should offer you support to understand how the, the exchange of value happens between you and your customers or users. So um, I think someone unmuted. You want to ask, uh, kind of tell us a little bit more? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
trying to remember the three games I actually posted. Yeah, I think it, it was just interesting because obviously we play kind of on those three games that you mentioned, but definitely fitting more on the um, productivity side. But I think we just see it from like from an individual level. Like, so I, I work for an insurtech uh, insurtech startup in in the UK, and we are looking into underwriting efficiency. And we uh, value this from like different levels. So like one is the attention, I would say, which is like how like you know how much uh, underwriting can an upper a uh, one underwriter can do in a day. So to me, that's like either attention or transaction. But ultimately, it's kind of like as a team of underwriters, like what like how many uh, good books have you actually written which is eventually the productivity side so yeah it was just like a question of like yeah we're kind of playing in this different game so i wasn't sure like which one would make sense to follow uh, to actually create that north star yeah so one thing that i would recommend here is to be careful if your product is first of all double-sided or not so if you're talking like a platform of platform, any sort exactly. like so decided. then obviously then you will have multiple north star metrics but one thing that can really help you is so first we start to look at the jobs to be done but obviously one thing that can help inform about the north star metric is the critical event so what is that critical action that you want users to take every single time they use your product whether they're free subscribing or not i hope that answers your questions more, more question more or less <laughs> yeah yeah it did, it did. thank you all right let's move on to the next one it says how does this product strategy link with other departments strategy a brand sales and overall business strategy all right that's, let's that's actually this from from me again well <laughs> okay. well business strategy when you think about a company that has a product that product is their strategy so i guess business strategy and product strategy should be more or less one on, and the same thing and regarding brand and sales uh, i'm not sure about brand but regarding sales obviously this falls you know regarding the acquisition tactics and the growth loops that the company uses so the North Star metric will inform how the product will grow, how the product grows. But obviously there are cer certain tactics that can feed into that, like collateral stuff like branding or sales. If your company is a marketplace like LinkedIn, recruiter, candidate, and they have multiple, not only that, do I need two North Star metrics? Absolutely. Yeah. They've recently, uh, not recently, they've acquired, uh, acquired lynda.com and now they rebranded it some. Yeah, LinkedIn yeah. Learning. I think, yeah, LinkedIn Learning. They also have Sales Navigator. So they have multiple products underneath the same umbrella, underneath the same branding of LinkedIn. Obviously, based on the critical event and the job to be done, you will have separate North Star metrics. You cannot simply have the same North Star for each product, individual product product they, they do completely yeah. different things for completely different audience and segments of users yeah. right so people interested in using linkedin to generate sales for their business like serious sales for their business like yeah. they're going to use the sales navigator product but just the casual users like probably most of us mm -hmm. uh, are just just in there to give like business updates look for a job so obviously there's there's different audiences in play but yeah linkedin would have two different north stars how to define north star metric for hardware no usage analytics Right. Um, can I jump into here? Because that's sure. actually like a very, very, very practical example that we are dealing. So Please. a company is producing like a uh, computer cooling gear and yes. it's a purchase that happens every like three years and you don't have like any analytics to it. So how many degrees was it cooled? And basically like right now they are observing like number of transactions. So how many units are they selling, which is pretty, um, let's say unconventional. No? And this is actually the problem that I'm handling for a year now mm. so going back to the question uh, to the so <coughs> there are no usage analytics uh i would strongly recommend to start getting some usage analytics <laughs> it's if, really if, hard yeah but that's like a very expensive product decision you know it's a piece of uh, equipment that you put in computer that's like right. an entirely new product yeah and anything without analytics is just going to be more or like less a shot in the dark. <laughs> yeah it's, it's just sitting in a dark room with a dart in your hand trying to hit a bullseye like without any any information or the parameters of the environment whether it's hardware physical digital mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty hard to find your way around and obviously make the right decisions so right. i was um, thinking about reviews or just like shout outs on social media to just like get quality feedback from users or whatnot just to get like a little bit of an indication is that the right line mm -hmm. of thinking or not really 
There are multiple ways you, uh, you can get feedback from customers. So for example, when we try to test something out, we always offer some kind of monetization, whether it's a voucher or a month of money, you know, something that would encourage people to take action. Yeah, to give us their feedback. Yeah. But yeah, that sounds like a viable option. Like, give, awesome. Given that you, it would be super expensive to have any sort of like hardware awesome. analytics, that, that sounds like something doable. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Thank okay. you. Next one is what to do if a company really thinks that revenue is North Star metric. Ooh, can show I take the, this show, one? Show them the fitness example. Yeah, exactly. Show, yeah, no, show the fitness example. <laughs> like, um, you, you can, so the North Star metric itself, it defines itself. You cannot just go in a company and, and someone says, no, our North Star metric is money. It's like going and say a bridge floats, right? I mean, you cannot just redefine something because that's what you believe. If you believe your the number you should be looking for is just revenue, then you're not using the North Star metric. If you're using a North Star metric, you take the framework and implement it as it is. And one brutal way to do that is actually cutting one channel that produces money. And then you will see that the revenue is actually a result of some actions. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, straightforward. Yeah, it's the whole like, like action and reaction. Like money comes if you're doing the right things, right? If you're not doing any things, obviously money is not gonna, gonna flow. All that's, right. Um, I would like to revamp this a little bit because that's yeah, practically sure. an example that came from Sean Ellis podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. So breaking growth podcast and some of the people that he's interviewing are still like number of transaction and revenue. Yeah. So uh, how to revamp this question would actually be how to get this leadership buy-in for North Star metric and activities that we could be mm -hmm. evangelizing this system with OKRs. So how to get them on board that North Star metric is not revenue. That is a very good question. And to your point, I, I guess that every company's board or executive team will care about revenue. Obviously, if you don't have revenue, you won't exist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. it's, a, it's a basic condition of, of a good running business. But the way you can, can persuade them and kind of get buy-in for this whole initiative of implementing the North Star, and the North Star metric actually works really great with OKRs, exactly. as, as Anna they, mentioned. They're complementary. Exactly. Yeah. The North Star metric basically gives you the O's Right and, and inform your yeah the, the the metaphor that we like to use like North Star metric helps you define the destination and uh, the the whole OKR idea uh, helps you kind of pave the the road mm -hmm. right in, in that direction make sure you're you're going in the you're heading a right way so they actually work really well together so you can say that oh I br I'm bringing in North Star metric and I'm just gonna ditch the OKRs that we've been using for six or twelve months mm -hmm. it's not the case you can actually pretty nicely combine them and in order to get buy in. Uh, you can uh, always uh, do the exercise like hovering and, and just do a silent vote among team members and, yeah. and probably uh, like product managers or, or uh, other, other people in the team and just try to understand what their feeling is. Like we, we always, that's why we start a workshop with that kind of slider thing where people vote. Uh, everyone, is everyone aligned on a product strategy? And people are like, uh, not really. Um, I know exactly what my work does and how it connects to the, the, the business outcomes. And that's the case that we see most often. People don't feel that their day-to-day -day work, that, that task that they have right now feels that it doesn't really bring any value, right? And it's, it's, it's just more like innovation theater that, that teams are doing. Again? Yeah, go ahead. So again, this is just a framework. You can experiment with it. It might work or not for, for your company. However, we usually saw some success uh, stories with this framework. So one important aspect is to con start convincing your management is also about talking the customer journey. And it's not just yep. a framework that you throw there. You actually tackle some very, you know, tangible things, tangible actions <laughs> in your journey and then moving for forward. Yeah. Oh. No, no, the other part. Yeah. All right. Thank so, that. Yeah. That has been a fantastic ex uh, answer, especially in regards with OKR and how to align it. That would be a super interesting comparison to present. So I would recommend to take some time, obviously prepare a bit and understand a bit better the framework because this framework is heavily misunderstood by a lot of product teams. It's something mm -hmm. that people intuitively get, but they don't apply it correctly. Yeah. So take some time to understand it and perhaps show some examples, show how mm -hmm. teams would work against the North Star and then the benefits of working in such a way. Yeah. Another great way is to, to trial it and then try to get people's feedback or you can yeah. create this sort of kind of before and after feeling. Like, do you enjoy the way we worked before or do you enjoy working within uh, the, the structure mm -hmm. of a North Star uh, metric? Yeah, and one thing that we realized with one yeah. of our clients, so we ran this workshop and um, we initially thought that this person is super, the owner of the company is super aligned on what we have to do. And for us, it's just gonna go through it, like through the workshop super fast. And we realized halfway through that actually it wasn't. And 
you would be surprised <laughs> what outcomes you might have in this type of workshop when you allied a lot of you know decision making people decision makers in the same room and talking about what really matters for yeah, the company. exactly that's impossible to execute in three hours that can go south so quickly and, yeah the workshop is not that long it's not like a design sprint where you need two full days or a full exactly. week it's just three hours that you can actually squeeze in in a day to test and it out even if you can in one day you can split it up in two there's like one hour and 30 minutes and one hour and 30 minutes so you kind of kind of spread it across uh, two days yeah. however keep in mind that even if the workshop is only three hours and you get buy-in and the uh, the outcome is let's say successful and you get buy-in for you know continuing with the framework the implementation will take maybe a couple of weeks <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course no that's brilliant thank you so much for taking the time and explaining it with hands-on example that was phenomenal to hear Thank you, Thank appreciate you. it. And a uh, last question in the board, there's one more in mm -hmm. the chat, I haven't forgotten about you. Who should participate at a North Star Metric workshop, exact roles. roles? So I guess that the answer depends on the size of the team or the company. So for example, if there is a startup, obviously we have the PM, potentially the CEO yeah. or designer, uh, someone from the tech, even someone from marketing yeah. or sales, that would be super recommended. When we are talking about a bigger company uh, where multiple teams need to get aligned, I would recommend to have the head of the product or the chief product officer, and then probably some decision makers uh, that have a word to say within the product. Yeah, and it's, it's, you, can you can easily bring in leadership. Uh, that's, that's, that's proven for us to be super valuable because we would end up with uh, kind of leadership positions, having a certain idea of what the value is that we're bringing to customers. But when you get actually down to it and you get them to face people who work uh, the trenches, if you will, every single day, you can see that there are some, some misunderstandings there. And uh, just the overall idea of alignment and clarity among all these roles is just, just super powerful. So as Anna said, we brought in CEOs, we brought in product managers, chief product yeah. officers. So everyone who is typically responsible of a successful uh, implementation and, and responsible building yeah. successful products should be in this. Yeah, this is gonna be fairly interesting for companies that have usually teams in silos. So even if yeah. they work with OKRs, we often hear that, okay, we, we know that we have common OKRs and they connect with the bigger, you know, bigger, bigger level OKRs, but we still work in silos. So the acquisition teams focus on whatever they're doing and we have no idea how they do that and what they're gonna reach on next month. So it's gonna be interesting to bring a leader from each team and see how they can get to a common sense. All right, let's see, we have one more question in the chat. It says, in terms of facilitating a North Star workshop, how many days and hours per day would you say makes it exciting with, exciting with optimal engagement? From a facilitation perspective only? Um, or I, just, I, the, I guess. so the workshop obviously takes three hours. Your job as a facilitator is to prepare everything and that can take from one to two weeks. And I'm saying two weeks, depending on the availability that you will have from the people you're gonna work with. So you definitely want to check out the, if they have OKRs, how they track success, if they have any metrics in place, you know, you want to have a conversation with the PMs or the P or PM. You want to make sure that you understand the high level roadmap because there is, there should be a roadmap in place and you want to see where they are heading. So there's some work to do, but afterwards putting it in place, I mean, putting it in, 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 in action, that's going to take a bit more because you have to set some new processes in place. You have to set some documentation. So the boards that we've showed you, maybe Raz, you can share it again. The two boards, those are just to illustrate how the North Star metric will actually work, but that will have to translate into some processes and documentation within the company. Yeah, uh, let me just show, show you what Anna was talking about. No, and... it's actually in the, oh, sorry, in the North Star yeah, yeah. workshop. So these are just to illustrate like, how you will apply it, but you need to actually sit down and implement that. Yeah. The workshop is just the, the kicker, if you will. Yeah. But obviously everything that has to do with the word strategy is not, not something I do in like two or three weeks. It's, it's more of a long-term thing and, and involves exactly. a lot of, a lot of moving, moving pieces. And through this workshop, we want to just make getting started so much easier. This is just easier. the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Let's call it like that. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. And just to wrap up, uh, I'm just going to bring uh, everyone to me. We want to announce the distributed 2020 event by Miro. It's going to be super, super nice. If you've been there last year, you know, it's, uh, it was a blast. Just feel free to, to click on this this blue button here and sign up. It's going to be between October third uh, October the thirteenth and the fifteenth. 
a lot of great speakers, topics on remote work, on product, on everything you want. It's going to be really, really cool. Definitely uh, check it out and we'll see you there. So uh, you're going to still have access to the board if you come, uh, come in early. You can just go in, click and open it in a new tab and then sign up after we're done. And just to end it on a, on a community note, we want to invite you to join the Miro online community. If you have further questions, there's tons of people there, including ourselves that answer topic questions, just your classic forum where people talk about various things regarding, again, remote work, product design, all of, this, all of these things. And uh, there's gonna be an event every month as part of this uh, EMUG, VMUG series. Uh, you can go to uh, Miro event site, you can click on the links here at the top right of these bubbles and go ahead and uh, sign up and to get updates for every event that we do. So we'll see you next month for those of you who wants to join us again. And uh, yeah, thank you so, so much everyone. We hope you enjoyed it.